Our race season ended with one last hurrah, the last chance cup. Unlike most of our club races where we go back and forth on a short course, this one starts the inner harbor and then goes all the way around the southwestern corner of Toronto Island and then back again. Keith and I were in for some sharp sailing as the wind and swell were at the upper limit of what little Warrington can handle. We knew that we'd be washing the decks and burying the rail for much of the day. As we made our final tack before the start, we found ourselves able to slip in in a nice spot right behind Blue Streak. You'll see that as they come up towards the committee boat, we had to actually drop a little speed to duck behind them. There's a lot of boats behind us at this point, so I knew that it was going to be crowded off the line. Blue Streak was actually a lot closer than this video makes it appear, and so they had to let out the sail to avoid clipping him as I did this little duck. Once he was safely past me, I could steer back towards the wind. You can see here that I'm just about perfectly lined up with the yellow starting mark, which we call the pin. Then, out of nowhere, a send comes down out of my blind spot and almost hits us. I think he simply didn't see us behind his sail. I had to steer to avoid the collision and so did he. It was the closest call that we've had all season, probably 12 inches at the closest. Once he went up, I was able to clear the pin and settle into a fast beat to the turning mark in the northeastern part of the harbor. The wind had died down a little bit by the time we tacked around the mark, yet we had to do another tack to, and then had a fine crossing with Dragonfly. If it had been any closer with Dragonfly, they would have had to duck us, since we had the right of way. But as it was, they managed to clear evenly in front of us. Exiting the eastern gap, the wind picked up again, often overpowering us. You can see how in a big puff of wind, the whole boat just steers itself right up into the wind, despite the helm. Once we rounded the spit on the southeastern corner of the island, we were able to enjoy a following sea and surf down the waves. TE18, also known as Gibraltar Brewery, is just off the southwestern corner of the island. We rounded it and started bashing straight into the lake swells. Not long after we tacked back onto port, we had a close call with another boat. As it turns out, we squeaked in front of him by a few feet, but he neither saw us nor heard my hail. The skipper later found me and apologized for the unintentional close call. It could have easily been a very, very bad collision. It was a good thing my hat was on tether because it was difficult to keep it on my head with all this action that was happening. We took spray into the cockpit several times, but Keith and I both know this belt well enough to cope with these conditions. Things calmed down a little bit as we made it through the eastern gap into the inner harbor. We jived around the last turning mark in relative ease. But then things picked up again as we headed into third place finish with just 26 seconds behind a second. Families came over for the annual end of the year banquet. And in perp three, in uh, Warrington, uh, Keith Nunn and Tay Moss. In uh, uh, first in series one, third in series two, and second in series three. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now the most improved racer, the NYC 16 foot skip, uh, who's moved up there, so and it was a real threat at Lyra. Hey, Moss. Honestly, after several years of effort, winning this 100 year old trophy was a pretty big deal for me. Keith earned his own trophy and set a day for a victory in the long distance in the hood race on Dragonfly. Now we have the Bobby uh, Norton Memorial plaque. This is through community service through yachting and a person who's done a lot with the Sea Scouts and all the rest of it and who was nominated by some of his fellow members, Keith Nunn. Yeah. triumphant culmination to several years of hard work.